Hello there, my name's Tracy Ilsom and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in Canada and welcome to my Paper Craft With Me YouTube channel. Today I want to do a fairly quick video for you uh, using a couple of, or an image and a sentiment from this stamp set, Artfully Aware. It's the featured stamp set on the What Will You Stamp Challenge blog today and I'm creating a project for uh, the design team. So we'll go straight into it. I have a piece of very vanilla card and I have already stamped this image onto a full adhesive post-it note and basically it's a post-it note where it's all adhesive apart from just a little bit at the end here um, so I've actually stamped it on two at the same time and um, I've just I'm going to use one of those masks but that leaves me a second one for later so first of all I have the stamp Having already stamped it onto the post-it, I am now going to that's tuxedo black ink. And I just want to stamp this towards the bottom of this piece. And the piece of card is actually two and a half inches wide by five and a half inches long. Now what I'm going to do now is take my post-it note and just place it over the top of that stamping. So now you can't see that bit. Now I'm going to grab a scrap piece. Of, so this is the piece I actually cut it out of and I'm going to use the edge there. And I think I'm going to do it about where I had it before. Now I'm going to do some water so I want to make sure my water is actually level so I'm going to use my grid paper to help me make sure that this line is level. It might not seem like a huge deal, but when you finish sponging and you realize that your water is at an angle, it, it can be a little bit difficult. So, and now I have a three quarter inch circle that I have punched from some post-it as well, and I'm going to put that into place. So I'm going to start with Mango Melody, and I have boxes of sponges here one for every single color with a little piece of card on the top and I'm going to just hold it down with a piece of kitchen paper so that I don't get myself covered in ink and you can see I'm not really making a huge effort to get that in any particular place it's just going straight on next I'm going to use pumpkin pie this is one of the older ink pad styles but it still works again a different sponge and I'm going to sponge that a little bit further up and again not worrying too much about getting it completely smooth I don't need to worry about that now I'm using berry burst this is a, one of the colors that is going to be retiring very shortly so if you want this particular color I would suggest you get it as soon as possible because it will sell out very quickly once the retiring list is formally issued on the 15th of April but we already know this one is going to be retiring so don't wait get it now while you still can and finally I have blueberry bushel grab that sponge and I'm just going to sponge that towards the top there we go okay slight hiccup in the videoing there but uh, let's get this get this going. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of that blueberry bushel across the whole thing and then I'm going to work back in reverse. So this is the berry burst, now the pumpkin pie and you can see all those lines and things that I initially had they've all disappearing and this is the last this is mango melody so now I've done that I'm going to peel off that three-quarter inch circle and you can see there I've got a very very white circle so 
without putting any more ink on the mango melody I'm just going to very quickly rub across it so now you can see it's much brighter compared to the rest of the background and that's what we want so now I'm going to move my line and I can use the ink that's on there to help me line it up and now we're going to do some water so I start with balmy blue get this to stick down it doesn't like sticking to the ink because the ink is still damp but we'll we'll get it done let's turn it upside down and we can do it that way make it a little bit easier to do hold that in place and balmy blue again I'm not worrying too much about these lines in my sponging oh there we go to hold it a bit there we go okay so that's army blue now we can go with Bermuda Bay going to go back to the blueberry bushel that we used initially and I'm just going to put that kind of around the edges there and the edge there just like that okay so that's all the sponging done um, now what I need to do one more thing before I take this off before I forget actually is I'm going to bring in high tide and I want this water image here block ready so I'll grab one in my case and then I'm going to use the blueberry bushel and I'm just going to stamp it across like that there we go and there is my scene so I'm going to stop it there I'm going to grab some stamping blends and then I'll continue with that particular image. So hang on a second while I just get that done. Okay, we seem to be having a little bit of technical difficulty there with my phone, but we'll carry on. So what I've done here is I have coloured the hair with the light Daffodil Delight stamp and blend. Then I've coloured the arm here and the bit of neck there with the light petal pink and then followed by some dark petal pink just underneath. Now I'm going to go back in with the light petal pink and just smooth out the lines on, on that arm there. Okay, so so that's done. Now let's go for the flirty flamingo. So again, I'm going to start with the light colour and I'm just going to really quickly colour all over this little t-shirt here. And once again, using the bullet tip of the marker, because that tends to slow down the amount of ink that's being laid down. So you're less likely to have that problem with it leaking past the edges of the, the image. Now I'm really quickly going in. This is the dark flirty flamingo. And so I've added some colour just towards the top here where there's likely to be some shadow from that arm. And also using the creases in the t-shirt that have been put there very nicely by the designers of the stamp. So that's that. 
Now let's do that top. This is the light Highland Heather. Again, this is really quick. I, I don't tend to spend a lot of time stressing over the colouring. You can see I tend to use, for the most part, little small circular motions and that gets the, the ink down and it keeps it moving, keeps it wet. There's not too many problems with lines appearing. So, of course, bearing in mind this is on a very vanilla card so that it will be a slightly different colour than had I done it onto white card so again just going around the the edges there trying to make a nice dark collar on that go back to the light and go over those dark edges with the light one and I'm not going to go all the way in I'm going to leave that partly undone and again, down here, where the arm is, there's going to be some shadow there, I think. Back with the light version of Highland Heather, going over those edges and blending them all together. Okay, now I've got the sleeve to do here. So start with the light. I'm going over that hair because the hair is actually on top of that t-shirt so I want to have some, there needs to be some purple in there, some Highland Heather. Yeah. And then again, blend out those lines very, very quickly with the dark. Okay, and finally, grey. I've got grey hair after all. All over that with the grey. That's the light one. And now I'm adding some lines going down because obviously my hair grows down, it doesn't grow sideways, so that's that. And then finally, going back to the Daffodil Delight, I've given this yellow, the light colour, some time to dry a little bit so that I can add more yellow without it blending too much. I want it to actually be able to see those lines. So, there we are. That's the piece for the card. Um, I will take that away now. I've got some other bits and pieces to do, but if you'd like to go to my blog today, www.papercraftwithme.com, you'll see the finished project using this panel that I've just made, and I will list all the tools and materials that I used at the bottom of that blog post, and you'll find the link to the blog just in the information below. So thank you very much for bearing with me. Thank you very much for joining me today at my YouTube channel. And I hope you'll pop over to the blog and I hope you'll subscribe and visit me again soon. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.